In this video, I'll show you how to use Novell iManager to manage Novell DNS. So if you want to create zones, create records, what have you, this is one way to do it, uh, is with iManager. Now when, before we get started, there are a, a few objects that are important to understand for Novell DNS. Well, I'm starting off with the locator object. Now this object will help us see which, it, it has the information as to what servers are running Novell DNS or have a Novell DNS server object and so this object would point us to this object and if there were more DNS servers it would point us to those objects as well so if you ha already have Novell DNS installed in your tree use the existing locator object when you go to install DSFW and I talked about that in my uh, one of my first videos on doing an install of DSFW now, so that that's the very first thing, locator object. Next is a server object. And you see it's a little different than the NCP server object. It has this little box. NCP server object looks like this. It has a red underneath it. So that's your normal server object that, that definitely don't delete. This is the DNS server, server object. Now these objects here are your zones. So here's your root server info, and here's our zone, or domain name is our domain is dsfw.novell.com so this is the zone that's created for it and this is the reverse lookup zone if you open these up you can see all the different records in here and you can actually go in and open them and it goes right to the other tab and if you want to change something here it is possible so that is giving you just a, a overview of the most important objects as far as regarding Novell DNS now let's go to the task and get a brief understanding of some of these uh, of what you can do. So our scope, this will allow us to point us to the locator objects. So say you happen to have multiple locator objects and you want to make sure you're using the right one, right server that uh, is primary for a specific zone. This is how you can make sure you're using the right locator object. Otherwise, it's just going to start from the top of the tree and the first locator object it finds. That's what it will use, and that's the DNS server information it'll have, and that DNS server will have the zone that whatever zones it's running. So this, if if you have multiple locator objects, this is a real important setting. Otherwise, it's not that that big. Also you know where you want to start from the top uh, of your containers or or what have you so that, that's our first setting and make sure when if you make a, a setting you click OK and OK until you're you come back to the the page here alright next piece the DNS server management so a lot of the the settings in here generally are done in the zone but there are some that are unique to the DNS server but there's some that you can set up on the DNS server or on the zone. So, like, say a forwarder, and we'll show you real quick. So, here we can create, modify, delete, restart, suspend, look at the event logs, you know, move it. We'll just look at the the view and just kind of go through. So, we have our, we'd have a list of objects, and this is being read off of the locator object. This would return which DNS servers we have. So we just have one at this time. Say OK. So we, we can see some of the basic information. The zones, it has the reverse lookup zone. It's primary. The zone, the you know, the server name, the zone name. And here's our forward list. So we could set up forward list specifically for the the server at the server object level. Uh, this would not take effect for the entire zone and you have to go and do it for the zone but if you say a request hits this server for this to a specific server and if a, a request hits another DNS server for that to another server so if you wanted to break it up that way that's possible and this if you wanted to exclude this is the no forward name you can make modifications there if you have the, the TSIG keys for secure uh, DNS. Uh, this is where you can uh, make changes that for that specific server. Again, this is the DNS server, not the zone, the server management. 
and then we get to just what we want to log auditing log event logs and some of the default information so if we want we can see this what the defaults are set at if you want to make some modifications you can do that here and finally this is uh, the optional names so if we look at the default values here some of the things that jump out are the novel dynamic reconfig so this is dealing with if you make a change so you you create a new record that record will be written into e directory and every 15 minutes a process comes through and reads the the records in e directory and create and adds them to the db file the the cached file or the db file that db file will be generated each time when dns is restarted so if you have a problem that is you know something's not being read that db file is actually what is looked at when it's looking for a specific record and if that's not updated then you're not going to see be able to resolve that name and it might just be because the novel dynamic reconfig has not kicked off yet so you can just wait 15 minutes or you can restart novel name novel dns if you like but generally if you're doing some administration 15 minutes is usually plenty it is configurable the lowest value you can set that to is 10 and one of the reasons why is if you set it to say 1 you might have a reconfig kickoff and say you have a super large domain uh, or zone the technical word for for the domain in DNS so if say you have a large zone that reconfig kicks off it's going through it's reading e directory writing them out to the database file and it never finishes because it kicks off again and it kicks off again and so every minute so the the default 15 is usually fine you usually don't need to make a modification if you do need it faster 10 is the fastest that you can set that to so that's one of the big things to, to look at but zone in zone outs um, anyway this is just gives you an idea of what this DNS server can do and, and what the default settings are and when you're done say you've made a change uh, back here say you added we go back here and we add a forwarder so we add say 192 168 100 uh, 2 so we add that it's not written into e directory yet so we've got to do that and then go all the way through and make sure we get to done click done if you don't do this it will not be written to e directory and then your records will not be updated so click done and then click OK so that's our DNS server this is our zone so if we want to create a new zone or modify one we'll just look at our zone so here's here's our reverse lookup here's our, our forward or the zone name we can same options uh, if you have other DNS servers you can add them in here to be authoritative so they can an really so they can answer requests they can make them a forwarder secondary there's lots of different settings you know all the, di the different settings that you can make right here so again uh, just go through so we already have a forwarder here this is a, this is unique compared to this this was not added here just because I added it on the DNS server I already had this added there so this is generally where you would set a forwarder is on the zone instead of the server but again depending on your your circumstances and your needs you can set it on the server itself and we click next next if you do make an ad just like in any other time using this utility make sure you go all the way through get to the done button click done and click OK so here is our specified the zone master so our server that's the master the email really that should be an at sign um, there but uh, let's overlook that <laughs> so the time to live expires or refresh policy it's all right here and we want to go to advanced policies again tsigs that's available here this is the uh, update so you're allowed to do one or the other allow updates from a specific server 
or or an you know, IP address or a subnet or at this update policy and DSFW uses this update policy for dynamic DNS so generally d dynamic DNS is done in conjunction with DHCP well we don't we're not setting up a DHCP server and really getting that intrusive into your environment so there's this policy that is set up so that when your workstations join the domain and a user logs in a works that workstation is dynamically added to DNS and this is the policy that allows that so don't change don't remove this or or change this policy uh, if it's missing we need to get it added back so it needs to look like that we'll go on uh, so again the optional we can look at the default values for this zone transfers you know same thing we get that all the way to the end click done again if you if you've made a change click done so that is the zone management very similar to the DNS server a few changes here's our records so if you actually want to create a, a server record or a record a pointer record a NS record this is where you would do it so if we want to view a record we can select our domain and select the host and this I, I usually do like a hundred or so just to make sure I can see everything there's not that many records on this server so if we want to look at a, so say we want to look at the the LDAP TCP default sites this will bring up which servers are domain controllers that's the the record uh, you know we can make some view it change it we can see it's a serve record if we want to change it to a different type of record which definitely don't do but you know <laughs> in this circumstance but if you have a record that you want to modify this is where it's at you can just click done or continue to go through and change the priority of it the target whatever you'd like to do and then again if you make a change click done and click OK that's it that's all there is to the iManager piece uh, going through and and uh, to manage your Novell DNS so hope this video was was helpful to you thanks for watching